Hi, welcome everybody. This is our first Facebook Live. It's a series that we're gonna have on kitchens that we're gonna walk you through the process of rescuing and restoring your kitchens. So the great thing about it is this first time we're gonna go over how to base coat your cabinets and how to use a sprayer. A lot of people talk about they're scared half to death about using a sprayer and it can make doing your kitchen cabinets really, really fun and easy. So one of the first things I wanna tell you, I've got a special guest here with me today and a lot of you don't know, but for 25 years, I manufactured, designed and manufactured a line of furniture that we sold all over the world. And my partner in crime in that was my husband, Gene Howard. So when I tell people to invite a friend over to redo their kitchen with them, that way they can help, you can help your friend do a kitchen and they help you. Um, I would invite my best friend and my best friend is my husband, Gene Howard. So um, we wanna be able to go over with you some real basics at first. And one of the things you need to be able to do is clean them. But we wanna come over here and show you our kitchen. We actually went to Habitat mm -hmm. and we bought these kitchen cabinets. And we wanted you to see they're actually a melamine. They might look oak or they might look pine depending on what color, what surface area. But many times that's just a printed material. So you see this on here, they're not real wood and it does have a glossy polyurethane with probably some liquid gold on it. So I wanna go over with you um, how to actually clean it. And then you'll notice the inside is just a laminate material that you can also use the one step paint on top of. So the first thing we did is we came in and we laid just simple craft paper and we took some painter's masking tape and we wanted to make sure that we protected our wall. So that way we're gonna be ready to paint the actual base cabinet. But you'll notice the first thing we did is we came in and we took out the shelving and we took out the doors. So let's come over here and we're gonna go over the cleaning process. Now, for years, Jean, what's one of the things that people have on their kitchen cabinets that they don't realize are there that they need to get off? There'll be pledge, there'll be old English, there'll be wax, there'll be um, grandma's, you know, 20 year nicotine habit. It'll be just all over the cabinets and they need to come off. So one of the easiest ways to do that is with our clean slate. A lot of times we've told people in the past to use Simple Green, which is a great grime and grunge remover, but it will not remove wax. So if you've got wax on your kitchen cabinets or a piece of furniture, you've got to make sure you get that off. I want to remind everyone, remember this is live. We're here in Memphis, Tennessee. We want to make sure that you send in your comments and your questions. That gets you in our drawing to win um, a Amy Howard at Home sprayer that we're going to be showing you today. So if there's any questions along the way, um, my team here is going to be asking me and that way I'm going to answer them live. So the first thing you need to do is you're going to take the clean slate and basically this allows you to, to take off all the grunge, the grime, and the wax. So this particular finish is, again, it's the veneer that I just took off of that cabinet and I want you to wipe over it really, really well and get all that wax and everything off. The good thing about it is, is that you don't have to worry about um, putting water back over it to get it all off. It's just gonna air dry after about 10 or 15 minutes and you're gonna be just fine. So I'm gonna come back. This actually wasn't too terribly dirty. I wanna make sure that I dry it just a little bit. Jean, what would you say one of the things is that people are most afraid of when painting their kitchen cabinets? Time and money. That's true. You know, one of the things with painting your kitchen is on average would cost, would you say maybe three to four thousand dollars? Minimum. To pay someone to paint your kitchen, this is going to allow you to be able to do it yourself for a fraction of the cost. The exciting thing is in this five week series where we're going to be showing you how to redo your kitchen, all the projects and things that we're going to be doing will cost under five hundred dollars. So you can have a brand new kitchen for under five hundred dollars. Amy, uh, Sandra is asking, what was the product that you cleaned with again? S Sandra, that's a great question. She was asking, what did I clean my cabinet door with? It's called Clean Slate. Um, it's an Amy Howard at Home product. It's available through our boutique retailers um, and Ace Hardware. So you can call them up if they don't have it in stock. They can order it for you. But it is a, a product that we develop. There's not anything else like it on the market. And it takes off wax and grunge, liquid gold, all those things. So it's a perfect product to have in your DIY pantry. 
Um, all right, so Jean, I have three different brushes here. I have a sponge brush, I have a chip brush, and I have a nylon brush. What would be your recommendation on painting the kitchen cabinet? When you've got something like this that's not perfectly flat, we've got some molding uh, detail here that drops down. So what we want to do, some routing here, is to be able to get down in here. The sponge brush, unfortunately, will offload a lot of paint down in here. So I would recommend the synthetic. All right, so on kitchen cabinets, you want to make sure that you don't use a sponge brush. It's going to give you lines, and it's not going to give you as pretty a finish. So I'm going to put that off to the side. The problem with chip brushes in painting kitchen cabinets, you've got a very smooth surface area here. And because of the way these bristles are, they're going to have a tendency at times, if you're not real comfortable um, finessing it and feathering it back out, you'll have a tendency to get lines in it. True. So I love Jean's suggestion of using a nylon or a synthetic brush. So, Amy? Yes, we've got Gina, a question. Yep, Gina wants to know, do you have to take your doors off? That's a really good question, Gina. Yes, it's best that you take your doors off. Let's span right back over here to our cabinet door on our wall again. So that's why we protected it. It's best, we're getting ready to show you how to use a sprayer on, on spraying the actual door. But that way I'm, I can come back in. I took all my shelves out. I can come in here and spray this very easily um, and spray the outside as well. You've got more control over it when it comes to actually working on the cabinet door, so I would definitely take them off. They shouldn't be that hard. So, um, so I'm just gonna stir this paint up. You wanna make sure that you stir it up really well. Now you'll notice we're gonna use it straight out of the can. You have two options. Today we're gonna show you how you can actually base coat it. Actually, do you wanna show them how to paint, Jean? A lot of people don't know, but when we were doing furniture for 25 years, Gene and I, um, we did this together. And um, as the furniture designer, he worked with me on finishes and production. And I think one of the things that we had the most fun was, was shopping for antiques oh. to come back. And those were the pieces that we actually worked with a lot of times. Especially where we went shopping for yes. the antiques. A lot of times we, um, we were able to go to the Paris Flea Market, not Paris, okay. Tennessee but um, Paris, France, but I was really bad because I would get real excited and uh, jump up and down and cry when I found antiques and Jean would get mad at me because we'd wind up paying twice as much for it. So, all right, so watch how Jean is painting. Look at the brush. See how this long, clean strokes, I always tell um, women, especially if they're painting their nails, you wanna think about painting a piece of furniture or cabinets like you're painting your nails. You don't wanna to continue to go over it again and again it's long, clean strokes. Look how he's loading it too. Load it up, offload. And when you're brushing this on, don't be heavy handed. Don't put a lot of pressure. What's gonna happen if I put too much paint on? Well, too much paint will crack. If it's too heavy as it dries, it's better to do two to three thin coats than one heavy coat. I have noticed a lot of people when they'll they'll show pictures of uh, cabinets that they've painted and sometimes it'll have a linear crack in it. It's because they're thinking because it's called one step paint that it's one coat. It's not. You're going to have to put sometimes two coats or three coats. You'll notice this color that we're using is called linen and I love it against our dark gray wall over here but see how this is kind of a faux cherry cabinet how well it's covering, but you're gonna have to put two coats and maybe come back with just a third um, to kind of thin it out and make sure your coverage is good. And you do wanna brush that out. Now remember, a lot of people don't realize this is called the One Step Paint by Amy Howard at Home. You don't have to sand your piece, you don't have to strip it, you don't have to prime it. Most people, if they're working on their kitchen, um, it goes into shutdown and it has a smell. This paint has no odor. There are no VOCs, there's no melamine in it. I mean, there's no melamine. Why did I say melamine? Um, there's no methanol in it. And so it's safe um, to even paint baby furniture, cribs, or children's furniture. Amy, uh, Christine is asking, what about painting on laminate furniture, like things from Ikea? Yes, they're awesome. And this is like a laminate. Mm -hmm. These kitchen cabinets mm -hmm. are laminate. They're not real wood. Um, so you want to do this, the same thing. You want to clean it really well with a clean slate first. That's going to allow you 
to get all those uh, surfactants that could adhere the paint from really sticking well. We tell people, allow about 72 hours to after you paint it. Now, Gina, I have a question. Mm -hmm. We're painting, it looks like, since we bought this from Habitat, this kitchen, there were some places where it was eaten up. What would have probably been the best thing to do before we started painting? If you want to go that extra minute, it would be good to take some wood putty and just put that in there, some wood filler, let it dry, sand it smooth with some 220 grit sandpaper. And can I paint just directly on top of it? And then you paint directly on top of it. And it would fill in places like that. Do you mind painting some of this larger area or are you going to, is it best that they go in and paint, if they're painting by hand, to paint all the way around before they go to the center? Mm -hmm. Yeah, either one, center out or outside in. About how long does it take this to dry? Somewhere between 30 minutes to an hour, depending on the temperature of the of the room that you're painting. Is humidity going to act as a problem? Mm-hmm. Yes. The higher the humidity, the faster it's going to tend to dry, and the cooler it is, the slower is the drying time. You'll notice how Gene is kind of feathering it out as he loads his brush up, and he'll feather it out. You want to make sure that you don't continue to go over the same area because it will double process. So. We wanted to be able to show you enough with the painting what it looks like, how to kind of feather it out. Where we, we want to show people how easy it is. Really the most difficult thing you're going to have is probably selecting the color. A lot of people love painting their kitchen cabinets the base color, uh, maybe a dark color and the top a lighter. In this particular kitchen that we're going to take you through the whole process of a backsplash. We're going to paint our appliances next week. Uh, the third week, we're actually going to be making a beautiful um, designer looking uh, backsplash out of glass in our lacquer. But the next thing we want to go over is actually how to spray it. So I'll continue to paint this, Jean, if you want to show them how to use a sprayer. Okay. Amy, there is a question. Um, Sarah wants to know, do you recommend using a roller for larger areas? And if so, what kind? Jean, what do you think? What? Well, if you're painting your kitchen cabinets and you start mixing the, the application with a brush, with a roller, with spraying, you're going to get three different textures. Mm -hmm. And so you want to keep it uniform. So if you start with a brush, use that same brush. If you use a sprayer, spray the entire uh, cabinet with spray. Uh, if you use a roller, you want to roll the whole thing. I'll so. be honest, I wouldn't roll it. Now, you, you, if everything's flat, you could get by with a roller. But it's going to give you that kind of finish. It's going to give you that finish. A foam roller, people will use a low nap foam roller sometimes, but you want to be careful because he's right. As far as even blending in with a nylon brush, you could get a little bit difference in texture. So I would say brush the whole thing or spray the whole thing. Amy, a lot of viewers are asking where can they get your product? All right, so if you go online, you can go to um, amyhowardathome.com or amyhowardhome, um, and you can see our locator. We have about 2,600 stores across the U.S. We are in boutique retailers as well as Ace Hardware, so that way you can just go on, find them, and then call them up, and they can tell you about different workshops that they're having, because um, a lot of our retailers do workshops and teach you how to use the product, too. So I'm going to keep working. Jean's going to come over here and show you how to actually get ready to spray. And we're going to show you how to use it. All right. First thing we're going to do, we'll have our paint. And then because we're spraying, we're going to add a little bit of water somewhere around the neighborhood of maybe 5 to 10%. What if I forget to add water? Well, What's if gonna you forget happen? to add water, it's not going to spray as smoothly with your sprayer because it'll be too thick. Now the nice thing about our sprayer is that it comes with two different tips and the orifice on these tips are, this one is the smaller one, this is good for more like uh, clear sealer, things like that, it's got a very uh, thin viscosity where if it's thicker, the tip that's on here has a larger one. What does viscosity mean for a lot of people that have not worked with paint? That's a, that's a fancy word for thickness, it's how thick or how thin it is. If you wonder what I fell in love with Gene, it was his sense of humor. So he keeps everybody here at the office and we do projects and stitches. We, we were, when we were talking about having him come, coming on and helping me today, we were like, do we tell him not to tell us jokes or do we just let him wing it, so. No, I, no jokes, no jokes. The uh, acting guild said that I couldn't do any jokes today. You're not a member of SAG, so. Amy. So. Um, 
We have a question for you. Okay. Yvonne wants to know what is the hottest kitchen cabinet color right now? Oh my gosh, it's like we, we told you to ask that. We were talking about this yesterday. I love navy blue kitchens. I actually wanted to do this kitchen in a color that we have called Lady Singing the Blues. It is absolutely amazing. You should check it out. Um, you can go online and see it. Of course, go into one of our retailers and you can see it. Also, we have one called a Brooks Gray that is a blue and we have a one-step color called American Dream. Remember though, if you go to Ace Hardware, um, they will custom mix any color you want but I especially love Lady Singing the Blues. It's awesome. Okay, Jean, I'm okay, sorry. We're ready to go. Now. All right, so you mixed it, you said with five to 10% water. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna go ahead and pour that in. Should I fill it up all the way or does it matter? You know, you would, if in a situation where you're doing the cabinets, it would be best to fill it as much as possible, probably oh, seven eighths of the way so that you've got more product ready to go and you're not constantly having to continue to add to it. Now, just because I want to make sure that we, we tell our viewers, what do, I, what do I need to clean this with when I'm finished? Water. This is a water clean product, so it's uh, uh, able to clean up with just water. Now remember though, you want to make sure you wear an apron, you protect the area that you're working. Because it is a fabric paint. Because it's a fabric paint too, and it will not come out of your fabric. Earlier, I saw a spot of paint on Jean's pants, and I said, did you know your pants had paint on them? And um, uh, he said, no. And he knows that once it gets into the fibers of the paint, it's done. So, um, which is good, because we're, when we show you how to paint fabric, it's gonna be a lot, lot more fun. Okay, so when you open up your sprayer from the box, it's gonna look like this, it'll be in parts. First thing you'll do is um, you'll look for the little opening in the corkscrew, and that goes to the top and just work that in and then it turns to the right and then it'll lock. Then you have a little safety catch that you'll lock into position that keeps you from having an accident. Now once you've done that, next is be sure your siphon, this will come loose so you want to make sure your siphon hose is snug in place and then pointed forward And then we're gonna screw our paint pot. Until it snugs up. And that's it? And that's it. And the nice thing is too, when you're finished, and let's say you had some paint left over and you wanna start your project uh, up again tomorrow or paint something else, that when you unscrew it, you've got a lid that just goes on top of your paint pot keeps it fresh while you clean your, your gun. You do want to clean this after every use. Never put it up uh, without cleaning or the paint will dry inside and it will uh, affect the use of this. So am I going to need to take all this apart when I go to clean it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's multiple pieces that unscrew and uh, there's a set of directions inside that will show you how to do that. Very simple though, very easy to use. All right, Thanks. Amy. Yes. Real quick, this is a question about the sprayer. Um, Diana wants to know, have you used the sprayer on fabric? Yes, we have. Yes! We rescued these chairs from a dump. Do you remember? We were getting ready to go do a show on Fox and Friends. We were going to do a show on Fox and Friends, and our son found these two chairs by a dumpster. And it was um, kind of a, a fabric that you would see on most office-type chairs. Mm -hmm. And then we found the vinyl chairs from the seven, and we found vinyl. If you're gonna spray vinyl, the one-step paint is awesome for it. You just wanna make sure that you spray them because when you're trying to brush vinyl, it doesn't look as good. So yes, you can spray sofas with this, you can spray chairs, and you're gonna be much happier with the results. But when you're working on fabric, I always make sure we mist the fabric just a little bit with water, tap, just regular tap water. And while it's just kind of damp, you can go in and spray it. It's a lot better. So we've got, come on over here. We've got a mock-up spray booth. So this is something that you can actually do at home. Um, and we just took some cardboard. So you could take an appliance box. You can cut it up. And we put the cardboard on the floor. So a lot of people, you may set up a spray booth in your garage or you may put it outside. We wanna make sure if you're working outside that you cut off the breeze. So you'll notice how we just bent our cardboard 
to literally make these wings so that way the wind is not whipping through because it could lift the paint up and come over on your piece. Amy? So, yes. Uh, we have a viewer asking if you could do this inside. Could you, you could do this inside. That's what's one of the great things about the fact that her question was, could you set up a spray booth and do it inside? Of course, because there's no VOCs, there's no smell. We just want to make sure that you don't have any overspray. So yes, and don't get it near carpet. Make sure that's all covered up. That will get in the fibers of the carpet. All right, so remember this is a cabinet door that we have cleaned. And this is just a little tote um, that we set some craft paper on top of. So that way it was at a height that we, so we could get used to it. So now Jean is going to show us how to actually spray it. How to use There's a couple of things you want to know before you start spraying. There's a little stop button here and you can thumb screw to the left or right. As you see, as I screw it to the left, it's elongating it and it's gonna be my stop. And this is a uh, material adjustment. If I, the more I back out of that, it'll stop the trigger from going back further. And so not as much material will come out. Or as I turn it to the right and shorten, it'll go for a longer uh, pull on the trigger and it allows more material to come out. So I'm going to practice with that just a little bit. Should we practice with something start? else before we actually do our actually, kitchen we're cabinets? Gonna, we're going to do it on our uh, spray booth. We're oh, okay. Actually spray on that. Okay. Also, on your uh, air nozzle, you can turn this two different directions. Where if it's so that way it can spray. Where if it's vertical, then your your V is like this. Oh, excuse me, like this. If I turn it this way, my V is this way. So it's totally opposite. Mm -hmm. it's, so I just want to make sure that I understand this. So if I'm turning it horizontally, mm -hmm. my spray is actually going to be vertical. Now my V will be a vertical. And if I turn the nozzle this way, the other way, then mm -hmm. it's actually going to be the mm -hmm. opposite. Okay. Be, so it horizontal. doesn't spray conically. It's going to spray... Just like a professional spray gun. So that's great, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's going to allow mm -hmm. me to get a better finish? Yes. Absolutely. And okay. what I'm going to do, I'm going to slowly pull the trigger back. That actuates the motor. And so you can feel the air coming out. And, <laughs> and then when I pull it all the way. So right now you're just pulling the trigger a little bit. And so I'm going to, I want a little bit more material. So I'm going to turn that thumb screw shortening the length so that I can get a longer pull on the trigger that's going to allow more product to come out, more material. So I like that. You notice, see how nice and uniform that is once I get that in, in the right, um, get that in the right uh, spot. Placement. And you can see there the overspray will go away. So watch what happens now that we spray. So do you start off, do I do I need to make sure that I come off of the cabinet like this and then go across? Yes, when you're working on this, you'll actually go all the way off and on as we go back and forth. When you're painting, I can go left or right, or I can go up or down. When you have the fan, as you saw this way, I want to go left or right. But if I change the pattern to where it was uh, horizontal, then I notice I would want to go this way. So I'm going to go left to right only because that's the, the at lacquering in me when I used to do a lot of lacquering. So I'm going to start off the piece. was that? Oh my gosh. Is that, that professional? Awesome. You know, the thing is, I, 
You know what surprises me the most is the coverage. It, it's great coverage, and notice another thing about that. Notice the material adjustment. We don't want too much coming out so fast that it doesn't have time to start drying a little bit because as we do this, you can feel the air coming out and that's also drying this as we apply it. As it, the paint's so, actually so going on. So if we on. do it slow enough, yet fast enough to get coverage, slow enough that it's not running and allow it to dry, you can just get this great uniform um, paint technique. We've got more questions. Okay, Hold we've on. got questions. Okay, I do want to say, now here's my shelves over here. Mm -hmm. These are just um, inexpensive laminate. It's not real wood. Mm -hmm. Can I set these up and spray these the you same way? Do the same thing. And they're going to hold up. And it's going to hold up. Remember your cure time, once you paint, give it 48 hours before you start putting things back on there. So that way it cures and it doesn't start peeling or scraping because it's still fresh and wet. Give it. Sharon said that we've got some questions that we need to answer really quickly. We've got a lot of people asking, we're showing using this on, on just cabinets, but is it good on any furniture? Absolutely. Um, you know, we're all about rescuing and restoring the 28 million pieces of furniture we throw in the way in this country every year. So you can use this on fabric, you can use this on upholstered furniture, you can use it on your vanities, you can use it on furniture, mm -hmm. lamps, lampshades. Small children. I told you we didn't know if we could let him do this or not. Um, but you do want to make sure that you clean it really well. Whatever surface area that you're going to work on, you want to make sure that you clean it really well first. Clean it with what? Clean it with Clean Slate. We love Clean Slate. We developed Clean Slate because we love the fact that it takes wax off. And especially a lot of people, if they've already painted a piece and they've waxed it, it'll take it right off. Which you're, we're going to use that as a segue to go into showing you how to wax. Now, Jean has done a beautiful job in showing us how easy it is to spray your kitchen cabinets or furniture that you're going to rescue and restore. Now we want to show you, if you want to, how you can wax them. Amy, so, what, yes. What is the finish of this paint? How would you describe the finish of your one-step paint? You know, um, is it chalky? That's what some people Yes, ask. okay, so what we need to make sure and talk about, Jean, I'm going to let you show them how to do the waxing, is it is a chalk-based paint. Now it allows you that kind of versatility because if you want to do antiquing, and we have other videos on how to show you how to do light antique wax and dark if you want to antique it, um, it really allows you to be able to create a lot of different finishes. If you'll notice our wall here that we're going to be doing some art on, this was actually painted with the One Step Paint, which is also a, chalk paint, a chalkboard paint, so I can do art on this. I can also come back and maybe in the inside of my cabinet when we have this finished for you next week to show you, you can make a laundry list of literally right on the inside of it. You can do a soccer list or a calendar on the kitchen wall or maybe in the mudroom in the back where everybody comes in and drops their backpacks off. So um, it's a beautiful velvety finish. It goes on really well. You don't have to seal the cabinets if you don't want to. For easeability and cleanability, we recommend waxing it. So this is a new product that we have. It's called Mind Your Own Beeswax. Um, and it's a very easy um, application. Jean, what would you recommend? Come on over and bring a rag if you want. Do you like using a brush or do you like using a rag? On a flat surface, I like using a rag because it's much easier, quicker. I don't end up applying too much because when you use the brush, you'll have a tendency to maybe use too much wax. But now on the cabinet doors here, because of getting down into the grooves, then I would probably come in and use a brush and, and feather that out so I don't get a lot of buildup in these uh, cracks and crevices of the... Now of here's the, the other thing. You know, we talk about different projects mm -hmm. having different brushes. When you're going into waxing, now is when you're going to use a chip brush. So the chip brush is great to be able to use with this Mind Your Own Beeswax, as well as our pup disc that we use. So we love um, the squeezability of this wax. It smells great. See the color, it's gonna go on clear. Um, but it's also a natural beeswax. It's something that you can update and maintain your cabinets with. Now you're putting a, a very little amount on. It goes a long way. So like, could I do my whole kitchen with that bottle? More than likely, depending on how large your kitchen is. Now. If if you're like us and not members of the Kardashian family, we don't have a large cabinet. I told you we shouldn't let so. him do this. 
And While he's doing that, a lot of people are asking about needing to sand before you paint. So. No, that's what's so great. So many people, that's old school. Um, they've all the time thinking you've got to sand your cabinets, you've got to go in, you've got to use oil based paints, it smells your house up. I have asthma, so that way you, you're smelling it. You don't have to worry about sanding. You notice we didn't sand at all. Another viewer asked, how is it hard to clean the sprayer? Dean, is it, what would you say, is it hard? No, it's about five minutes to clean it, if that long. It's like any good tool. If you take care of it, it's going to last a long time. Now, are you, are, oh, you're getting ready to do now, the inside you notice, with your brush. I'm just going to put a little on the brush. Oh, I love that. And just be able to, just a little bit there on the tips. That's awesome. And it's not changing the color at all. Now, as a rule, a lot of people don't realize, but with furniture from years ago, and especially a lot of the really fine antiques, they didn't use some of the lacquers and the shellacs and the solvent-based um, products that the manufacturers do nowadays. So this natural beeswax is gonna dry to a really beautiful, hard surface. So after about, would you say, Jean, 15 or 20 minutes? Yeah, and the longer the better. The longer you let it dry, the harder it gets. This feels really good the, already. And the easier it is to buff it. So that way, after you put that on, we're going to wait about 15, 20 minutes. We're going to take a lint-free rag and we're going to buff it to a beautiful sheen. You're going to be amazed. Even especially with darker colors. One of our best-selling colors is... Um, Get a close-up of his hair. See, see what great hair Jean has? It's gray. So one of our best-selling colors is Mind Your Own Beeswax, and I named it out. No, what am I saying? One of our best-selling colors is A Good Man Is Hard To Find. So um, I named it after him because it's a dark gray, and I love it on kitchen cabinets. Amy, once you're done and you've waxed and buffed, how am I going to clean my cabinets? Do you want, you know, people ask that all the time. It's not hard for, for me. I mean, as far as this is dried, it'll have dried really hard and you can buff it. So I'll come back with even some Windex or some cleaner and just wipe spaghetti sauce off or soap and water. So just um, a mild cleaner. A mild cleaner, right. You don't have to worry about it. It's going to come off very easily. You but it won't water. take your wax off. It's not going to take your wax off. Now, what if you, um, what if you decide you want to repaint them? and you start getting bold and you want to redo your island and you want to do it like a dark gray and you're going to keep your other cabinets maybe a cream color maybe this linen take your clean slate and take the wax off first that way you're ready to go on and paint again so that way you can redo them as many times as you want all right how often do you need to reapply wax you really you know in our kitchen we probably we never reapplied the wax. We reapplied for years. I mean, we lived there for um, eight years and never reapplied the wax, and we were hard on them. I mean, we would have the youth group over, and we'd have 100 kids in our house. So, um, you know, that's a personal preference. If you want to put it on maybe twice a year, that's not a problem, or maybe a piece of furniture that you use that has a top on it, if you want to do a little bit more often, you can. So, so hopefully today this helped you with learning how to be able to see how easy it is to rescue and restore your kitchen. Or maybe you got encouraged to see how easy it is to just spray furniture. So it's going to be time you're going to go and maybe um, go to Habitat, go to your local thrift store. Uh, on Saturday mornings, we go get some cappuccino and we have a place around the corner here on Summer Avenue in Memphis. And we that's our little haunt. We make sure that we dress down. We don't want to look um, we don't want to look too good because we want to make sure we get deals on everything. So I think they've caught on. They know what we look for, but it's, it still makes it a lot of fun. Um, and hopefully today you, uh, you saw what a great partner Jean has been with me all these years in rescuing and restoring furniture. Grab your best friend, um, grab your partner in life, and have them do projects with you. That way you can enjoy the bragging rights together. So hopefully we'll see you next Wednesday at 3 o'clock. This will be on Facebook so you can refer back to it. We're going to show you how to rescue and restore those ugly, dingy, old appliances.